This is the Wayfarer from around 1500 by Hieronymus Bosch. At first glance it may look a bit boring with its muted colors, but paintings by Hieronymus Bosch are always full of exciting details and moral messages. Like, why is this man peeing? Why is there a cat skin and spoon hanging on the outside of his basket? And what is the meaning of this owl looking at the birds? Let's start with the general idea here, which is the poor traveler at the center. He makes his money by selling some of the items in his straw basket. We don't know where he's coming from or where he's going to. And that's exactly the point. While the traveler looks back over his shoulder, he has choices to make, just like we have to do in our life. Bosch gives few details to figure out who the man is, and that is also deliberately, as the man should represent the viewer, us. It's like a round mirror in which we should reflect on our own life. The main question for the traveler is whether he continues on the path he is walking, opening the gate in front of him, despite the ox blocking the entrance. This would be the right thing to do, despite the landscape in the distance not looking too excited, including the presence of a gallows mountain where people were being hung. Although it is not clear whether the path behind the fence would really lead to this area in the distance. Or will he deviate from this path and choose a life full of sin and vice, like the people in the inn behind him? And he must make a choice soon, as the growling dog is coming after him. Before looking at the details, let me put the Wayfarer next to another work by Bosch from the same period. This work is from the Haywain triptych, when the doors are closed, and shows a great resemblance to the Wayfarer. Let's start with the traveler himself, wearing one shoe and one slipper, a bandage around his leg, holes in his pants, and a dagger and a club to defend himself in the rough world. The bandage seems to be a reference to the sins he has committed earlier in life. He has probably been bitten by a hunting dog, which we will get to in a moment. And then he has a few curious items, like an amulet that looks like a pig's foot or pig's trotter, which is a symbol of luck. The skin of a cat hanging from a ladle on the outside of the straw basket on his back are references to wastefulness and disaster. The hat with an awl, a small pointed tool, is a reference to the trait of diligence. So the items both refer to positive and negative things, virtues and vices. And the meaning of all these items would have been clear to the people back in the day. The man has a choice to be someone who shares positive things in life, or bring disaster to other people. The area he has just passed is also full of strange scenes. There's the growling dog with a spiky collar chasing the man, which may be a direct reference to the devil. The bandage on his leg suggests that he has been bitten before by a dog, but this time he tries to keep the dog at a distance with his club. The allegorical message here is that the man has sinned in the past, but that this time he tries to not do it again by keeping the devil away from him. And while I call this a club, some people simply refer to it as a walking stick, which was also used as a symbol of a steadfast belief in God. We also see a hen and a pig and seven piglets eating from a trow, and the house is full of oddities as well. It is probably an inn, or perhaps a brothel, looking at the sign of the swan on the side. On the roof, full of holes, is a stick with an inverted jug, and it looks like some underwear hanging out of the window below it. Then, there is the couple in the door opening, who seem to be quite intimate with each other, and a caged bird next to them. None of these signs give the idea that anything good happens in this inn, at least not seen from a Christian point of view, which was the purpose of this painting. Oh, and then I almost forget our friend on the side relieving himself. And then there is a clear meaning to the presence of some of the birds. Look at the owl in the tree, looking at the titmouse a few branches lower. And at the bottom of the fence is a magpie, and the ox is probably aware of its presence. These interactions refer to the fact that we are being watched on our life path 
and that our choices will be seen by God. This painting is on display in the Museum Boymans van Beuningen in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. It's not a panel painting that stood on its own. It was part of a triptych and you can see a vertical line running through the center of the painting. The left and right side of this painting were actually painted on the back side of the doors of a triptych and when the doors were closed, this would be the image that the viewer would see. The various panels of this triptych have been separated over time. On the opposite side of the left door were the Ship of Fools, which is now in the Louvre, and Gluttony and Lust, which is now in the Yale University Art Gallery. These two works formed a single panel until the 18th or 19th century, but were then split up into two parts. Without going into all the details of these paintings now, they are a reference to the sin of wastefulness, basically preferring earthly pleasures over decisions that would honor God. The opposite side of the right door contained Death and the Miser, which is now in the National Gallery of Art in Washington DC. Again, the miser here has a choice between choosing for a bag of money and earthly possessions and making choices following the lessons of Jesus. As you can see in this reconstruction of the supposed triptych, there was also a central panel of this triptych, but unfortunately that work has been lost and we don't know the content of it. Given the content of the other panels, it would be a safe guess that the missing panel would also contain an allegorical message reminding the viewer to make the right choices in life. If you have made it this far into the video, I hope you enjoyed all the intriguing details in this painting, all creating the message that the viewers of this painting have a choice on which path to take in life, a theme that runs through many of the paintings by Hieronymus Bosch. And just to be transparent, the explanations for some of the details in this work are still open to debate, as little has been known about the life of Bosch and he had a highly original style which makes it not always easy to compare elements in his paintings to those in other works. Finally, if you want to support the channel, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below with your thoughts or questions, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.